line When every one of them is giving up and giving in Tell me, in this house of mine Nothing ever comes without a consequence of cost Tell me, will the stars align? Will heaven step in? Will it save us from a sin? Will it? Cause this house of mine stands strong That's the price you pay Leave behind your heart It's been a couple months. I've been working on a review now for a little while and it took me all through the holidays and I'm finally able to finally deliver what I think will be a very important video. And it's about a very special unique camera. That is this camera. Right here. This is a very, very unique camera. Why? Well because I can put anything 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 and I do mean anything on this camera so what does that mean what does that mean you got a very unique camera now we're going to talk about the uniqueness first of this camera. Crossing off my little checklist here. This camera is unique because A, it is, it's wide. It's a very wide camera, but it is very small. And uh, that's first and foremost what it can do for its size. That alone is incredibly impressive. The other thing that's incredibly impressive about this camera, outside of what it can do for its size, is what you can do with the sensor. Why is that so amazing? Well, I'll tell you why. Variable scan mapping. I'm sure you've heard of it before. Variable scan mapping, VSM. What does this mean? Why does it matter? It means that I can put this lens on, which is actually a 35 mm lens, but doesn't cover a whole 35 sensor perfectly, all the way to this, to this. With the speed booster, this is very close to full frame. So, JVC is in a league of its own. It is a well-renowned, world-renowned camera manufacturer that doesn't make its own lenses. Doesn't do it. Not interchangeable lenses. I'm not talking about lenses on their camera, about these. They don't make them. So they can bring out a camera that can put on any lens. They break the cost barrier. Economically, economically, this is unheard of. Why in the world would you make a camera that would take lenses other than the lenses you make? Why would you do that? You sell your camera for $500, but you make all of your lenses at least $300. You make $1,000 in profit no matter what happens. 
you go home a happy camper, and all of us independent filmmakers who can't afford interchangeable lens cameras have to start out on cameras that don't have detachable lenses because it's a lot cheaper. That's how you start out. This camera is different. This camera means you can buy this lens. You can buy a Super 16 lens. You can take a HD TV lens and plop it on here. You can take any lens you want to ever made in the history of the universe and put it on here. And yes, even E-mount lenses. Because I have seen those Fujinon E-mount lenses shimmied uh, differently on the back with the metal shimmings to attach to a Micro Four Thirds uh, mount. Almost any lens ever can go on here. Because of that factor alone, I, 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 it's, it's going to be, it's going to be, it would be very rare to see an LS400, which is a shame because this is the best camera I think, ever. So that uniqueness alone, the fact that you can take the sensor with variable scan mapping, and you can crop it, you can crop in, you can crop out, you can crop in, you can crop out, all the way down to. HD, which is about a B4 size sensor, all the way out to full Super 35. And that means that you get the lenses on there with no oversampling, no extra usage, none of that. Because it doesn't use JVC's own proprietary uh, recording mount or recording format. It doesn't use XAVC, doesn't use whatever the hell Canon's using these days, it doesn't use any of that. What it uses is quick time. Quick time, quick time, quick time. Doesn't use anything except QuickTime. So you're getting 422 QuickTime files. That's what you get out of this camera. Now externally, you can get all kinds of stuff, but that's what you get in here. That also is unknown. Why? Because JVC doesn't want to make their own codex. Because they want to give cameras, like their new camera just came out, you could take raw right out of there. It's a small sensor, but you can take the raw information right out of there onto an SSD. 10-bit, 4K, 60B. That's nuts, right? And whatever thing you want, you choose it, right? And what they offer you is all will always be simple quick time because they don't make codecs and they don't make lenses. That's why JVC cameras are hands down the most freeing cameras. And that's why this camera is so freeing. You can use whatever lens you want to with a nice standard codec that isn't baked in, that any computer can read, that can give you good, easily edible 4K, 422, 8 bit 4K. Because the feature set on this camera is light about. Now JVC has done an absolute horrible job selling this camera. Sorry JVC, I love you. I love your company, I love the cameras you make, but you guys are really bad with selling stuff outside of the broadcast world because this was new. They had never done anything like that. So they updated this camera 
an insane amount for almost two years of constant updates, which means that the camera that debuted at NAB in 2015 is going to be completely different than this camera. This camera doesn't even compare to that camera. On on a paper sheet, it, it it's different realms. It's different levels of camera for the money. So that alone is why it was very hard to sell. So the feature set on this camera are as follows. This is correct. This is current. This is right. Any other information you hear is wrong unless it's coming from JVC Kenwood or I forget uh, his first name, but uh, I think it's Chad. Chad Chad something. I think it's Chad. Anyway, uh, the guy who's on all the forums on DV Info and everything. And I have scoured the internet for information about this camera. So what we're going to talk about right now are features of the LS300 today 2019. First off, this does 120p slow motion. It's sharp, it's full 1080, it looks great, you can up with the 4K. No one will be able to tell a difference unless you're one of us. It is great, amazing, wonderful, perfectly smooth slow motion, and you even keep your audio, which is something, mind you, that only Sony's can do in 120p. And that isn't slowed down. This is slowed down with the audio, and if you speed it back up, you are able to retain the audio so you can record something in slow motion and if you're worried about oh I need to get an audio clip here it's fine you can just speed it up and post and you'll have that audio so this has one of the best 120p slow motion modes available out there done it does that yes it is a crop but it doesn't matter because you just buy a lens like a micro four thirds lens, like the 14 to 140, you slap it on here, you're already 20% wider than you would be with this lens, and then that crop doesn't affect you because you have a wide angle micro four thirds lens. Or get a wide angle super 16 millimeter lens with, uh, you know, actual cinema housing, and there you go, you'll be great. So you can get the lens to deal with the crop, therefore the crop doesn't matter. Now, we move on. It allows variable scan mapping zoom. So because you can select sensors different sizes, you can crop in the sensor to cover your lenses. Once you set it to a certain size, in 4K you have a 1.5 times zoom, I believe it's around right around there. It's, it's noticeable, you get a little creep in, a little creep out. 1080, it's dope, it's all two times zoom, all the way in, all the way out. You lose no resolution, it's par focal, and it makes every lens here double the length. Every lens here is double the length, and the 4K thing here is 1.5 times the length, and 1.5 times 140 millimeters is a heck of a lot. So, that is awesome. The other thing it can do is, uh, in 4K, obviously it records up to 30p. It records up to 30p in 422 8-bit ProRes quick time, 150 megabits a second, internally onto the SD cards. You don't need fast SD cards because there's an update that lets you record 80 megabits a second 4K if you don't have fast SD cards and you're in a pinch but you want the 4K resolution. It obviously doesn't hold up as good as the 150 which is rock solid but um, it is there if you do want the better resolution downscale to 1080 it will still look sharper than regular 1080 and you're not using and you don't have to use the expensive cards if you're caught in a situation. That's the 4K features. It also records 24p in Cinema 4K 4096 C4K 24p. I don't care what anybody else out there says, it records 4096 resolution at, t at 8 bit, 422, 150 megabits a second, quick time at 24 frames a second. Period. There's no debate there. It does that. It also does that in Cinema 2K at the same frame rate. Both look great. Now that that's done, now that we're done with 4K, we're going to talk about 1080. It records 1080 from 60p, 120p, that's the slow motion, 60p full screen. You can do 60p, 1080, no problem, full sensor. You can also do 1080, 30p, and 24p, and 720p, 20, 24, and 30p, and 60p. All You do all that internally 8-bit 422. Now externally, through the HDMI device here, which is a HDMI 1.4 something, you can get full 422 color sampling 4K 60p. The only other camera that can do that in this price range, that's not a cinema camera, is like super big, bulky, giant, is the Blackmagic Pocket 4K camera, which you have to add all kinds of crap to. Uh, 
or the Panasonic GH5, which is great, but it lacks all the other features like every like ND filters. So XLR inputs that a zoom button, you know, camcorder. It's an actual camcorder with SDI out. You find me a professional camera that lets you output Super 35 full size 4K 60p at 422 color sampling, regardless of the bit depth, with XLR inputs and ND filters for $1,100. Which, by the way, it's cheaper than the GH5S. Then you can go ahead, call me Pink, and call me Sally. quality on this camera is amazing. It is jaw-droppingly amazing. In 1080 and in 4K, everything looks amazing. This is the best image I've got out of the camera from just picking it up and using it. When I shot the stuff in Chicago that you saw earlier, I, I hadn't used the camera before, and it just came out looking that way. Um, I also used the log. The log is incredibly easy to grade because it's not super flat because it wasn't meant to be super flat. So it gives you a very nice starting starting point to add your 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 work to. So it grades wonderfully. The colors are wonderful out of it. The image is clear. It's crisp. It's beautiful. This is probably my favorite image that I've gotten out of a camera and it's just so easy to use and the fact that I have such a robust and strong image with the 422 color sampling uh, in here and then obviously the any bit rate you want uncompressed uh, you know ProRes 422 color image out of it the fact that it's so robust is that you can I just shoot with a regular uh, picture profile that I like that lets me have a little bit of room with contrast a little bit of room here and there but looks great out the camera so I can sit there and sweeten shots and post and they always just come out amazing this camera's image I can really darken them down even even in regular shooting mode I was able to save a lot of shots when I went out to the coast which was a pretty high very bright situation with not much contrast I was able to take them in post add contrast and darken that all down and I didn't have any issues and the image didn't really break up. I pushed the crap out of the slow-mo image, which is 1080, and I was able to still get uh, definition in the clouds and in the waves when I shot that. Just a young gun with a quick fuse. I was uptight, wanna let loose. I was dreaming of bigger things and wanna leave my old life behind. Not a yes sir, not a follow-up. Thunder, feel the thunder. 
Now let's talk about compatibility. And this is where it gets absolutely confusing. There are lists, several lists, at different issuings at different times as to which lenses work on which cameras, what speed boosters work, what adapters work, what lenses work, what electronic controls work with this electronic micro four third sensor, what works, what pins work, what, what, what can you do, what can't you do, does the image stabilization work, does the power zoom work, does the adapter work, are you going to get blinking, what's the world's going on with the lenses? I know, I know, calm down, calm down. I know, you read a manual from 2015 and it didn't tell you anything. Well, I'm here to clear all that up for you, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to tell you, when it comes to Micro Four Thirds lenses, you're not really going to run into many issues. At the end of the day, you will have control of the lens. You will find, off and on, an Olympus or Panasonic lens, the image stabilization may work. 90% of these lenses are going to have no issues. If they just have image stabilization, it's almost guaranteed that that will work. You may not see it show up on your screen, but it will work. There is an exception to this rule. This exception is with power zoom lenses. Now I know what you're saying. Who in God's name would buy PZ lenses? Well, there's one lens that's not too bad. It's a 45 to 150, I believe. PZ lens. That has image stabilization and a power zoom. You will be able to either control the image stabilization or the power zoom on those lenses. That includes the Olympus lenses that have the motorized zoom feature in them. You will either be able to zoom or use image stabilization. There is no lens where you are able to use both of those features. But why in God's green earth would we want to zoom a PZ lens from Panasonic or Olympus because almost none of them are power focal. That's where the VSM zoom comes in and you can just use this. So outside of the 2% of you that bought this camera with a power zoom micro four thirds lens, you shouldn't have any issues at all. And the power zoom should work, but you may not be able to use the image stabilization. That is it when it comes to micro four thirds lenses. Everything will work. Everything will work. You still get the same 4K. You still get all the features and the image looks great. You're not really losing anything because I go to 86%. Most Micro Four Thirds lenses cover the whole thing. And most Olympus and Panasonic lenses cover more than Micro Four Thirds because they're so sharp. So what you can do, because we're doing video and not photos, I can crop to 86% and use most Micro Four Thirds lenses, which makes this 14 to 12 mil. So using Micro Four Thirds lenses with a bigger sensor means that each lens can give you better and different characteristics and you can be a little wider, a little tighter, and you can have image stabilization and it's just wonderful. If you want a par focal lens and you don't want to leave the Micro Four Thirds system because you don't want to bother with adapters, I highly recommend Olympus lenses with uh, those clutch focuses and if it's a zoom with a clutch focus, it should be pretty damn par focal. Your speed boosters. Speed boosters. Do they work? Yes, every speed booster will work out there that has an electronic connection to Micro Four Thirds. They will all work. You'll have no. You shouldn't have any issues with that. Um, there is an issue. I have the Viltrox here. I recommend the Viltrox over the Metabos, Metabones because it is a lot cheaper and it works just fine. The only issue known right now with Canon lenses is the very cheap 50 mil. If you have a older stock version of the Viltrox, the firmware is a little wiggy and so it gives you a black screen and off and on for about a minute or so and then it will come on all the way. Uh, that's been fixed. Update the firmware on the lens adapter if you can. Now a word of warning to you. If you want to use your entire sensor with a speed booster, do not get the speed booster. Ultra and the Metabones Ultra, anything that says .64, don't use. Don't use it because you will not, it will not cover the whole sensor. If you want a speed booster that works, you have to do 0.71. That's the speed booster that works that will cover your whole lens, you'll have your whole sensor and you'll have no issues. Remember, Viltrox or Metabones, 0.71. Further lens compatibility notes. If you have an electronic lens like a Canon or a Nikon, um, or anything else that requires or you know anything else that requires, or like a Pentax lens or whatever, anything that requires electronic contact to uh, adjust iris, uh, autofocus, or stabilization, expect it to work identical to the GH5. This is how you can figure out everything so easily with the LS300 after reading the manuals. The notes that aren't there is because there is another Micro Four Thirds camera called the Panasonic GH5. 
look that up. Look up that adapter, look up the reviews for that adapter. The performance will be identical to on here. It shouldn't be any different. Image stabilization should work on all electronically controlled lenses as long as you have a notable name brand adapter. Don't buy a $30 electronic adapter from China and expect it to work on here, it ain't. You gotta spend a little bit more money on this. This was about 100 bucks. So you spend a little bit of money on an electronic adapter for your Nikon or Canon lenses. It should control image stabilization and it should control iris control. If you have any issues, my recommendation, pop it on the body that you had it on, make sure it's wide open, and then slap it on the camera you're gonna use, and then, you know, just try to hope that the image stabilization works. You should not have an issue with image stabilization on any electronic lens adapters. They should control the lens functionality fine. As far as I know, if you have a smart adapter for Nikon, if you have a smart adapter for Canon, if you have a smart adapter for Pentax, it should work without question. Make sure any other lenses you buy that are not Canon, Nikon, Olympus, or Panasonic, uh, make sure that they are manual and you should be good to go. I have ran into no compatibility issues that are known because of the camera. So your lenses will work on this camera. It'll work, I promise you. I guarantee you that your lens will work. If you buy the correct adapter and keep everything updated, you will not have a problem. Now that information is 110% 110% sorted. You all now know all the questions you have on all the Facebook groups and all the forums. Even Jordan Drink will have all his questions answered about lens compatibility issues and features of the camera. I know this is a long video. I know we've spent probably 10 minutes talking just about lens compatibility and features, but there is so much misinformation about this camera, it has to be done. Now that that's finished, we can now continue. I really recommend this camera over anything else. I recommend this first. Outside of an FS5 for six or seven grand, I recommend this. Pick up three of these, you will be 110% satisfied with the picture, with the image, and with the quality. And if you're smart, get yourself that Atomos V and pop it on here. It's actually a five inch monitor popping on here. It's very, very, very usable and very nice. It supplements this screen, which isn't the best. It is real hard to get your exposure on this cam, on this screen. The screen's how to get exposure with because it's very low contrast. Now that I know that it's bit me a couple times, not to where I couldn't recover the image because the image is very robust. I was always able to recover everything and didn't lose any information. I need to rely on the ray form on here uh, and the histogram a lot more than I need to uh, the, uh, the screen. So don't trust the screen, trust the scopes, move on with life. Outside of the screen, I don't have a con. I haven't ran into anything. It works for everything I've thrown at it. It gets amazing pictures. It it just gets the job done. When I shoot with this camera, I don't think about the camera. I just shoot the video. It doesn't matter that it's an LS300. It doesn't matter that it's a whatever it is. I don't think about this camera. I just go shoot. And I have this parfocal two times zoom when I'm doing 1080 stuff and I know I need to be able to zoom. I got the, it works great with the 14 to 140. It's an all around kick, kick butt lens. I can pop my speed boost to run and get super low light. It's great up to 2000 ISO. I don't have an issue with the, with the video. Anything above 2000 is a bit much, but 2000 ISO with the speed boost to run. I mean, come on, <laughs> that's pretty good low light. Um, and it just works. The color is good, the focus is good, the image is good, the, the, the build is good. This screen here, people have issues with the screen, but that's a, that's an actual issue. Take your camera back to JVC, it's not supposed to do that. This is a very robust, solid screen. And then I have a robust, solid viewfinder. The build is, is very taut. It's plasticky, yes, but what camera isn't these days? It's got the SDI port, it's got the HDMI port, it's got the ND filters, it's got the lens mounts, whatever lens I want to. It's got two XLR ports, it's even got a backup audio in if you don't want to use the XLR ports or you're like me, you didn't have an XLR cable, all you have was a 3.5 cable. Well, they got the backup on the back there for you. The battery life, phenomenal. The recording length, phenomenal. Phenomenal. I, other than the screen, I just don't have any complaints about it because I don't think about the camera when I shoot with it. I just shoot with it. If you're spending anything less than five grand, I recommend the JVC LS300.
So with my last drink of water, I want to say thank you for watching. Thank you for your interaction, the conversation we have. I want to thank everybody on Twitter. I want to thank everybody in all the Facebook groups. I want to thank everybody in all the forums. I want to thank everybody in my comment section, everybody who watches my videos. I want to thank everybody who interacts with me about cameras on a daily basis. I am truly, truly happy to have interactions with you. I'm truly happy you're interested in my opinions on cameras. And um, I hope that uh, I've entertained you for a little bit and you enjoyed this. Remember, if you can pick up one of these, pick it up. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Have a happy new year and thanks for watching. I'm Chris Whitmer and I'll see you very soon.